We're going to begin this half hour with a big health alert. Despite the arrival of spring tomorrow, some winter respiratory viruses are still holding on strong. Thank you for staying with us. I'm Glenda Lewis. And I'm Brian Abel. Data from Wastewater Monitoring offers insights into which pathogens are declining and which ones are gaining momentum. Our chief health editor, Dr. Parth and Andy here with more. And Doc, what are the details on this? Yeah, so it's a national uh, program called Wastewater Scan. Now, researchers can track 11 infectious diseases in testing wastewater for genetic material from viruses and people's waste. Now, recent data shows this, that concentrations of COVID-19 are declining and the numbers across the U.S. range from low to medium. So that's the good news. Now, while COVID is declining, other viruses are stepping up. Data shows that the stomach bug norovirus is surging, uh, particularly in the northern hemisphere. The virus is the primary cause of foodborne illnesses, accounting for 58% of cases each year. Also, parainfluenza viruses have peaked a couple of times, mostly uh, recently, most recently in February. Mo the numbers have not yet declined, and wastewater scan data found that parainfluenza is in 55% of samples, including the Midwest. Now, another pathogen on the rise is rotavirus. Initially detected at low levels in September, wastewater scan data now reveals a significant increase in its prevalence, reaching high levels. And of course, the flu is still high in pockets of the U.S., especially here in Michigan. While influenza has subsided, influenza, I'm sorry, influenza A has subsided, influenza B has spread. Wastewater scan data shows that the flu strain B is now detected in 96% of samples. Mm. All right, so what symptoms should everybody be looking out for? And all of those things that you mentioned, yes. is there vaccines for all of them? Yeah, we're talking about so parainfluenza commonly causes upper and lower respiratory illnesses, mostly in babies, Brian, young kids and older adults. But anyone can get infected. Symptoms includes runny nose, cough, sneezing, sore throat, and fever. Most people recover, but some can develop serious illnesses like croup, bronchitis, and pneumonia. As for a vaccine, there is none. Unfortunately, norovirus causes very unpleasant symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, stomach cramps. It sends over, get this, 100,000 people to the hospital and causes 900 deaths every year. It tends to hit older folks the worst, but kids aren't spared either with almost a million trips to the doctor's office annually. There's also no vaccine for norovirus. As for rotavirus, it can cause diarrhea and vomiting, but mostly in babies and young, chi young children. And this can lead to dehydration. The CDC says that it's responsible for over 200,000 emergency room visits and up to 70,000 hospitalizations. That's a lot for kids age five and under. As for vaccines, there are two rotavirus vaccines available for infants, which provide 70% protection and 90% from developing severe, severe disease. Now, most people are familiar with the flu and COVID-19, and both of these, please remember, have vaccines available. Since it appears that some of these viruses are going to stick around for a while longer, please try to stay healthy. Remember, talk to, we talk about this, right? Wash hands thoroughly, safely handle and prepare food and clean commonly used surfaces like doorknobs and, and taps. And don't forget to stay up to date on your vaccines. These are some simple things we talk about, but it's important because people are still getting sick mm -hmm. and not Listening, obviously, so please listen. And maybe fist bumps instead of handshakes. Bam. Just like we do <laughs> work as well. All right. Dr. Nettie, grateful as always. We'll hug it out later. Right. <laughs> Off camera. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. If you have a health question for the doctor, you can email him, Dr. Nandy at askdrnandy.com or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. <laughs>